are dropping a lot that they are going to take up a job, day job. My, uh, you know, uh, explanation to that is that, yes, routine jobs will be taken over and it's all being taken over by the AI or robots. But there are specialized skill jobs. So students should focus on developing skills rather than knowledge. They should be, they should develop the skills to manage this technology. And there were, because we are the creator of this technology. And we need to know how to manage this technology, how to develop it for the student benefit. So the specialized jobs are going to be there. So students should not limit their learning and knowledge to the theoretical part. They should become specialized in certain skills. If they become specialized, they will have a demand. Otherwise, it will be a very tough time for students to compete in the world of technology. Hi guys, once again welcome back to our channel. So this is me Ranjit and today with a new episode of the podcast. So in today's podcast, I have a very special guest and her name is Anita ma'am. Hi ma'am. Hi, how are you? I'm good ma'am, how are you? I'm fine. So in today's podcast, we're gonna talking about artificial intelligence and machine learning. We're gonna know about how how the machines have changed the human uh, human lives and how uh, uh, it can be a threat to ourselves. So uh, if you are new to the channel, guys, please subscribe and hit the bell icon. So enjoy the podcast of Ranjit Bora with Anita Ma'am. Hi, Ma'am. Hi, Ranjit. How are you, Ma'am? I'm fine, Ranjit. So how is the day going, Ma'am? Great. So uh, before going to the topic, Ma'am, I want you to give a short introduction of yourself, Ma'am. Just a brief. Okay. So I'm Dr. Nita Walia. I'm an academician. I have been uh, learning and training on artificial intelligence and uh, my passion is about learning new things in technology and uh, I can tell myself that I'm a techno innovator uh, and I've been in teaching industry for 15 years and I have a huge passion of, on teaching. Ma'am, uh, how did you find your passion in technology ma'am? Uh, see I started my career with learning computers when internet and windows have not even reached India. So it was about early 90s in India. And uh, slowly I found that uh, this is something which is my field and my cup of tea. Uh, and I started my journey in ITC Infotech as a software engineer. And then uh, from there, uh, I moved to HR. And then when I came to academics, I started learning about new technology. And I found it is very interesting. So that's how my passion has grown. And I don't learn for teaching, I learn for myself, that's my strategy. So initially, uh, what kind of difficulties you find, find in yourself while uh, learning these kind of, uh, I mean, any kind of codings or, uh, technologies. or technologies? Okay, um, coding is something which I tried my hands on. And practically speaking, I found that for coding, you need in-depth knowledge. And more than knowledge, you require practice. And if you don't practice, I feel that uh, you can't apply that on a real time project. So it's very important that the students who are learning coding should do some live projects and apply that knowledge in that. So uh, how was your campus life ma'am? I want you to take it back to your uh, college life. Sir. So my college life was totally different than what you see today. Uh, it was without technology but then I must say that uh, this was a life which was full of uh, the thought provoking, uh, you know, thoughts in the mind of the youth. Uh, you had a lot of creativity uh, in terms of learning on your own. Uh, collaborative learning was there. We had no other source of learning that apart from our teachers and students who were together summarizing and learning together. So it was fun. Um, so ma'am, not uh, going to the topic ma'am, uh, well, what do you exactly mean by AI ma'am? I feel AI is the uh, human built intelligence. Though the AI is progressing a lot, in every field we can see the application of AI. But I still feel that what God can create, that's human intelligence, man can never create. So how much different do you find in AI ma'am uh, from your generation to uh, our generation? Okay, so in my uh, generation AI uh, was a term which was coined by Join McCarthy in 1960 and 70s when he talked about can computers think, can machine think. From there the idea generated. And I still remember when I was in college I saw the movie Terminator and I could see the actor you know coming out scanning with his eyes 
and interpreting the things around uh, him. Uh, and I was thinking, was it possible? And today technology has made it possible using AI. So AI is advancing a lot, but in a way I feel that uh, it's not the technology which makes a difference. It is how we use the technology to create difference in our life. Uh, Ma'am, uh, can humans survive without AI? I mean, nowadays we um, AI is everywhere. In every domain, it's just uh, yeah, bringing a great impact. But uh, I mean, is there a possibility of surviving of human beings I mean, without AI? Okay, I have a very conflicting answer in that. So I feel that uh, today we are talking about uh, open AI, which is actually uh, the term um, given by Elon Musk, who are the innovator or tech innovator in the field of AI. Stephen Hawking also worked a lot in the field of AI, but at the same time, they have a concern. And the concern is about, uh, is AI going to be developed for the benefit of the human AI, human being? Or is it going to pose any threat? So there's a lot of debate going on. I feel that the world was uh, doing well without AI. And uh, with AI, it can do better. But only if the development is in the field of benefit for human being, not act as a pose or as a threat for human being. I mean, movies and all, we used to see that. I mean, uh, this uh, AI is going to totally... Um dominating the uh, human survivance and uh, they are building their own empire, right? Mm. So do you think that in the future, will it be uh, in reality? Can, you, can it be? Uh, there will be a possibility because what is shown in the movie can become a reality and uh, the idea of uh, developing AI to overpower the mental ability as well as the physical ability. See, physical ability is already being overpowered by humans. Robots can do much harder tasks and can do much better tasks than the human routine jobs are all, all taken by robots. But at the same time, the mental ability, there are certain things which I don't think the human being will be able to develop. That is the consciousness because if you do that, you become a god. And uh, But uh, how AI is developing, the way the AI is developing, uh, how it will be used in future, that is going to define whether it's going to be a threat or an opportunity. For example, if the people are using AI to make become themselves or make themselves superhuman beings, everybody will try to process this superhuman being power with the help of AI. So the world will become very competitive and very dangerous. Humans are more dangerous than machines. Because they create machines. Uh, Ma'am, so there is a company called Neuralink, right? Mm. Which is owned by Elon Musk. So mm. uh, the, com the mission of the company is to implant, uh, implant and uh, achieve uh, inside the brain, right? Mm -hmm. So because uh, And uh, it can uh, learn anything fast. Mm. So what do you think about that, ma'am? I mean, will it be going to be... Uh, if, it, uh, if it get in wrong people, so don't you, do you think, don't you think that it, uh, it can harm uh, in a danger way to humanity itself? Okay. Neuralink objective, see Elon Musk objective of creating Neuralink company is to study the brain functioning and try to imitate the similar function in the machines. But what is happening as a present Neuralink is working in a very good direction that it is trying to understand the human mental ability and disability. I feel it will be beneficial if it works in the field of mental disability. Uh, our world is full of mental disabled people uh, if and medical field is not able to explain certain mental disability and Neuralink I think has an objective to understand that and to correct that mental disability in the person if it works in that field the Neuralink is going to do wonders but if it is working to enhance the mental capability for example a student uh, uh, who can just rot certain things depending on his memory power and forget after some time. And we don't remember many things from our past. But Neuralink is going to create where you can transfer your memory to your computer and remember everything. Whether it is going to be beneficial or not, I don't know future can tell. So it means, I mean, we, uh, we may become totally dependent on this machine, right? Correct. We are going to become mentally lethargic in terms of if we make machine do every, every mental job. Yeah, uh, I mean, recently also in the case of chat GPT, right, man? Mm -hmm. I mean, it can do anything, right? I mean, nowadays, um, 
when when teachers uh, give some tasks to students they don't even think about them uh, mm. think by themselves this is go somewhere on google or just chat gpt or any kind of open ai right mm. so because of this don't you think that i mean the thinking of uh, ability of uh, human beings uh, decreasing slowly yes see as a academician i believe that student uh, learning should enable them to go for a critical thinking or reflective thinking with the application of ai in the form of chat gpt3 is going to kill the creativity in students now if you see the students writing a uh, creative content will go off and chat gpt3 will kill their creativity will kill their thinking power uh, and i'm talking about again the job opportunities so uh, already the ai have replaced human being in every sector so uh, what all skills should someone uh, uh, someone adapt <coughs> so that uh, in in upcoming futures so that they can uh, make sure sec- secure about their job so that they can make uh, themselves secure in terms of a job uh, or in any, any other aspect ma'am so what do you think what are the required skills that someone need to learn in this today's uh, generation ma'am? see people are talking a lot that they are going to take up a job a job my uh, you know uh, explanation to that is that yes routine jobs will be taken over and it's all been taken over by the ai or the bots but there are specialized skill jobs so students should focus on developing skills rather than knowledge they should be they should develop the skills to manage this technology and there were because we are the creator of this technology and we need to know how to manage this technology how to develop it further for human benefit so the specialized jobs are going to be there so students should not limit their learning and knowledge to the theoretical part they should become specialized in certain skills if they become specialized they will have a demand otherwise it will be very tough time for students to compete in the world of technology so ma'am ai is basically i mean uh, we are initially we are giving some instruction then after that it used to uh, learn uh, everything by uh, just looking its surrounding right okay. then how uh, are these uh, machine learning different from ai machine learning is about training the so is machine there, is there any interconnection between um, uh, machine learning and uh, this uh, yeah. ai uh, machine learning is a sub domain of ai uh, machine learning requires to write you know a particular code and uh, train the machine it train them on a formal and basic structure what machine learning does it you train a particular machine or a model and make that machine learn on its own using that model so you are training a machine how to learn so there are different kinds of learning in machine learning we say supervised learning and unsupervised learning machine learning is unsupervised for example in supervised learning what we do we go to a class we monitor students learning and we make them learn certain things certain task they learn and they do it in the same way this called supervised learning machine learning is unsupervised where we teach something to the machine and machine go beyond of our supervision and learn and write codes the programming codes and develop its learning further just like student learning in the class certain concept and going to uh, the online learning material and do self learning that's the machine learning concept uh, ma'am i'm talking about if someone want to start their career in machine learning or in um, any uh, mm. in computer area so mm. i mean uh, should you need to be a um, science background i mean a computer background or anyone can uh, come and start their journey it's a total myth uh, normally there is a myth that only engineers can uh, learn python r or code or any kind of machine learning languages uh, today we have lot of platform which is with no code ai and uh, google has developed those platform uh, companies are not necessarily recruiting engineers for uh, you know development of ai application uh, examples are the people uh, from schools right there are a lot of people uh, who are doing a uh, learning coding in the school and in the schools they are not learning a specialized engineering subjects so google has uh, come out with a recruitment process where they said that even we can hire a school kid Uh, who learns coding so coding is something which are taught now from school so you don't require a particular basic uh, you know kind of a knowledge for that and now we are at the end of the podcast so before ending every podcast i used to have a rapid fire mm-hmm. round uh, so 
so shall we shall we start yeah okay so my first question to you is ma'am what fascinated you more about technology ma'am um i'm fascinated by the capability of technology uh, in terms of outperforming uh, human being okay now the second one uh, who you admire ma'am elon musk or jeff bezos i admire i'm always a big fan of elon musk Uh, and will there be a war between AI and humanity in upcoming decades or in future? It depends on the development and the direction of the development in AI. But definitely, after some time in future, AI will compete with human beings. And what one best advice you would like to give to an earlier twenty-year-old student? I'll advise them to uh, focus on uh, these skills. There's a lot of choice of career available, and focus in a proper direction. So proper direction is needed. Okay, now the last one. Uh, can Bangalore be the next Silicon Valley of the world? I think that Bangalore, the Silicon Valley, it was called initially, but uh, slowly the uh, it is the shifting is happening to Pune. So I feel Pune and Hyderabad is going to be the next Silicon. And what one thing you would like to add at the end of this podcast, talking about anything AI or whatever? See, I would like to just give one uh, kind of advice to the student community that don't limit yourself. Uh, sky cannot be the limit. This is what I believe. Uh, try to you know develop your knowledge in the field, emerging field of technologies, emerging field of business, and uh, don't limit yourself. Be very creative, and uh, self learning is always the best possible way of. reshaping your future otherwise uh, you will end up in a career where you are going to compromise and you not be happy so all the best to the student community and keep learning keep innovating be creative and be focused thank, thank you. you thank you so much ma'am for your valuable time for having this wonderful podcast so i hope you guys get to know much more about ai and machine learning and uh, until the next video try to learn something new find out your passion just give a try and take care